somebody who's watching this on DVD, this changes every single thing that we think about because what we realize now, the weak transducer, the place that we lose squatting, in the back. Squatting is not a lower body exercise. It's, it's, a, it's a low back exercise and at some point your low back doesn't allow you to transfer any more force to your legs and you stop. But in no way does it allow you to get maximum work capability out of your lower body. And I'm convinced after seeing these loads, you know, my freshman the other day, we did one, they did 115 for 15, every one of them. Did 15 reps on each leg with 115 pounds. If I had said to them, you're gonna back squat 230 for 15, absolutely no conceivable chance that they could do it. I don't think they could back squat 230 for five. So what does that tell you? We're not, you know, and, and this is gonna be the hardest thing for people to accept, you know, the, the muscle head crowd, you know, the T Nation crowd, the internet forum crowd is gonna be like, but Mike, you're saying don't do squats anymore. Yes, I'll look right at the camera. Yes, I'm saying don't do conventional squats anymore. We are at that point, and I've talked to Jeff about this. The thing that we were trying to figure out, okay, how do we test it? So we, this is what we talked about before implementing, experimenting. We went in and said, let's figure out what we think will be an acceptable load and then simply ask them to do a repetition max test. And again, our weakest player did 145 for 14. And so if we translate that out to a back squat, that translates out to 290 for 14. His best front squat is, I think, 245. Yes? What if they can't replicate those same reps from one leg to the other leg? We guess? have not seen that at all. It'd be very interesting. We were almost, maybe two reps was the most difference, Karen? So the worst difference that we saw was two. And almost everybody was exactly equal. But I think, again, I'd probably do a little bit more work. I would think if you, see, if you saw a dominant to non-dominant problem, so basically we can go back a step, thinking that a right-handed basketball player is going to be left leg dominant. If my right-handed basketball player who's left leg dominant does two more reps than he does on his right leg, I'm probably going to consider that to be within normal. If my right-handed basketball player who I think is left leg dominant does two less reps, I'm probably going to be really concerned. But we did not see a lot of asymmetry at all. The problem that we, there's a couple things that we saw and then I'll answer your question. One, depth is an issue because they're not going as deep as they would have in what we would have looked at as kind of our parallel squat and there is some there's an inconsistency in depth, but what we did, the reason, and so it goes back sort of to validity and reliability for your stats class in terms of, you know, is it valid, is it reliable? I don't think it's valid to compare person to person because of the differences in body types, but I know that it is reliable in terms of I can compare the person to himself because we're using the same height box for everybody, we're putting an Eric's pad on the floor, every rep they have to touch the Eric's pad with their knee, so we're not counting any partial reps there will be a little bit of difference in terms of depth. Some guys will get what looks like a really good parallel squat. Some guys will look like they're maybe 10 or 15 degrees above parallel. So there's gonna be a problem there. But the big thing is it's so far out of whack in terms of what they could do on two legs to what they could do on one. You know, some people would say, what about, do you think the back foot's helping? Are they pulling with their back leg? I'm like, yeah, they, all of that could clearly be a factor. The difference in depth could be a factor. Pulling with their back foot could be a factor it can't account for the fact that we gave them a hundred percent load and they did a you know they basically took they they did a hundred percent load as if it was something in the sixty five to seventy percent range which means we could probably increase that load again if we just do our math we could probably increase that load by thirty percent and still be fine the other problem that you get here you can't just do it if you haven't done it you can't simply say we're going to do this test it would be an absolute disaster you need four or five or six weeks of doing this. The other thing you need, this is like the four minute mile. And you know, everybody's heard the Roger Bannister story. You know, Roger Bannister breaks the four minute mile. You know, the, it's the unbreakable. Okay, nobody can run under four minutes in the mile. He runs under four minutes in the mile and I think the next year 52 people broke the four minute mile. So a lot of times these sort of how strong things are really based on, okay, what did you see somebody do? You know, suddenly someone sees Popco do 230 for 14 or see, you know, with, like with the kid before with Colin Wilson, Willie decides to put 225 on the bar and everyone's like, oh, you can actually do that. Next thing you know, somebody else has 225 on the bar and is trying the same thing because now, you know, literally somebody set the bar. Somebody said, this is where this can be done. And that's why I said, like with Angela, we used to think Angela was strong because she could do one leg squats. We did not envision, if someone had said to me down the road, oh, you'll have people doing one leg squats with like 100 pounds, you know, they'll have vests on them and dumbbells. You won't, you, your problem will be figuring out how to load them 
I would have probably had the same conversation I just had with Karen and Ollie. I would have been, yeah, yeah, right. Like, we're really going to run out of ways to load these guys. They're going to have so much weight that they can't hold the dumbbells and the weight vest. And that's going to be our problem. That's our problem now.